Hello everyone, this is Diane. Welcome to my pretty pink cottage. Today uh, I'm going to talk about organizing, but I don't think I'll be doing any organizing on this video. I have been doing some off camera, and I'm just going to show you some of what I've done, and maybe if we have time, uh, do a little bit of creating with some of the scraps. All of these things I'm showing you um, are paper scraps and fabric scraps pretty much. So I just want to show you what I've done to contain them and I, it's always an ongoing problem for me figuring out how to contain the scraps. Um, it's never a hundred percent perfect solution for me anyway. Um, my space is limited. I don't have a lot of shelves. So anyway, I'm just going to show you what I did. Right here in front of me I have the items that are by my sewing machine which is just to the left of the space that you see right here. I have a 10 foot long table in here and this is the area where I do most of my crafting and then I have another chair just next to me uh, by my sewing machine. And these items sit by the sewing machine. So one of them is this little pencil box. Maybe I'll find a pretty container at a flea market um, this summer, but this is what I've been using. And this holds my little medallion pieces that I cut off of old doilies. And I, once in a while, will go through and organize everything and stack them all up nicely. And of course, while I'm crafting and looking for something, I make a mess. But it's organized for now. And... Then I have this little box, which is just the lid of an old Christmas card box that I got at a flea market. I got cards in it. And this little box just contains my vintage sequins that I got at a flea market. They were all, well, I'm not sure if these are from a flea market, but I know these are, and some of these are, um, or uh, from a, a yard sale. I got them from a crafter who was giving up all of her stuff and she had a lot of sequins and things like that. So I just put them in there and then I have little vintage appliques and I got these from her also and these and most of these I think. Some of them I've got in that flea market so it's just assorted little vintage appliques that make, make nice accents here and there. And um, I also put in here these little strips of images that that you can cut off and use. So they're like an applique. Well, I guess they would be an applique once you cut them off. And there's butterflies and hearts. And I believe I got both of these in two different Happy Mails. So they're with my appliques. I have a couple of larger hearts. I've used some of those. <clears throat> and some little butterflies. And I got a bag of ribbony things like this. These all came together in a, from a flea market. So I tidied everything up. And look at that cute little poodle applique. I don't think that's very old. And they are all in this little box. I do um, stamp some things on muslin. So I have a few pieces of that here. But in this tin... Um, I have smaller pieces of muslin that I've stamped and little canvas things that are purchased, printed on. And these little Tim Holtz stitched pieces. Uh, these are just too big to fit in the tin. I had these kind of mixed in with some of this other stuff and I just set them aside because I want to create with them or get rid of them. Well, these I won't get rid of. I will create with them. Oh, that's a little fabric cluster. These cute little animals. I'm going to make some clusters or fabric flips with them. And uh, these are circles that I had cut to make layered embellishments, like a layered flower type of thing. Um, and I used some in a journal, in some journals, and then I didn't finish making them. So I'm either going to finish them or get rid of them. So some of the things I'm going to show you are things that I've decided, you know, I need to dispose of or actually make something with them. No more hanging on to stuff. 
certain things. And these all just are stacked together near my sewing machine. They're out of my way. Um, I have my two ribbon boxes. They're glove boxes, and I use them for the short pieces of ribbon that I can't wind around a spool or a card. So I I went through them and I pulled some out. I will be doing more de-stash bundles in my shop from the things that I've d um, done some de-stashing on. So these are the pieces that I'm keeping. They're just laid very neatly in there. And of course, they'll get messed up when I want to go through and see if I have something in there that I need for a particular project, but I do tidy it up from time to time. And then uh, my newer one, I'm glad it's nice to actually go through everything you have because you forget what you had. And I knew I had stuff in here, but I thought it was just overflow from the other one. But these are particular pieces that I got toward the end um, on the Labor Day rummage sale. The really pretty embroidered things and lace collars. And some of these aren't from that, but I put them in here because they go along with it. But these beautiful little... And I'm going to take it out of the box because the lid won't stay open. These beautiful things. I don't know what they were for. Well, this is just a trim. And these are just really pretty lace pieces. They're like a, a piece, a finished piece. It wasn't cut off of a longer piece. And these embroidered pieces are the same. There's a little rounded end on these. And these have two rounded ends, and they're in different colors and a few different styles. They're so pretty, and I forgot about them. So I really want to make sure I use them. These are some other ones in there, and these little kind of cutwork lace pieces. These are just special embroidered and lace pieces in this box. So they're separate from the others, um, so I know to go here if I want to get something like that out. And it was a good reminder of what I had. This is the little box that I got at a flea market. It was a candy box. It's got all kinds of fuzzies stuck to it because it's kind of a velvety finish to it. But um, the, the box was empty when I bought it. I just liked it. And this is where I keep my fabric flips that are pre-made. But look at it. It was full. But I have pulled out most of my fabric flips and... They're in with my things that are going to be listed in my shop. I just wanted to start over. Some of them aren't even finished. I have to sew them before I put them in the shop. But I had had them pinned together. So I've got some little scraps of snippet rolls. Those are That's all I have left of whatever snippet rolls I had. So if I want more, I'll have to make more. But I have those little pieces. And then I just saved out a few fabric clusters. Where'd that one little cluster go. I'm not sure where I put it now. But small flips and a couple of clusters. That's all I have left. <laughs> Sorry. Then I have these little containers that hold small pieces of fabrics and laces for making fabric flips and clusters. I got these I'm not sure where. I don't remember if it was Hobby Lobby or Walmart or something like that. Maybe even Michael's. I don't know. But this one has muslin pieces and white and cream. Even little little pieces left over from linens that I cut up. So when I want a small piece of, of a cream or white color, I, I look in here. This one has any other kind of printed fabric, um, but these are smaller pieces than what I keep in my drawer of fabric. Um, so when I want to make fabric flips, I just bring these things in and some laces, and I have a tray, a big tray that sits on my lap, and I have my scissors and my pins, and I just start um, putting together fabric flips. So that's what I'm going to do. I did pull out some pieces of all of these and they'll be in my shop. I'm not sure how they're going to be bundled. They'll probably be with other ephemera. And But these are full and I can't add any more to them so I want to use some. 
So that's why I kind of cleaned out my fabric flips and I will just make a bunch more and maybe some of these will go in my shop too. I haven't been using as many fabric flips as I usually do, but that's kind of because I've been making different types of journals than I normally do. And these are just little bits of lace that can be added to the flips. So after I have a few good fabric flip and cluster making sessions, I may get rid of things in here that I don't use. You know, just kind of clean things up and start fresh. Sometimes that is really a really good thing to do. And another thing I found was um, these long strips that I had torn of muslin for a specific purpose and I don't need them for that purpose anymore so I just had all these long strips of muslin so I decided to sew them all together they are different widths and different colorations so this one is coffee dyed and this one isn't so I didn't care I just sewed them all together and then I wound them around a card and they're right here. So I can cut whatever I want for whatever purpose. If I want to make a ruffle, if I want one to tie around a journal. Um, once I cut it off, um, I hope that it would have a seam on it because I like where I seamed it. I think it's, it's just fun. And if I needed to, I could sew around the edges to prevent more fraying. For instance, if I wanted to use it to tie around a journal, I might want to sew around the edge but I didn't sew around the edge of this very, very long piece because I might not need it sewn. So why waste time doing it? And I think that's all for the fabric items. So maybe I will work on some fabric clusters. I have been um, not feeling well for over a month, if you've been watching my channel, just from various, nothing serious. I'm just setting these things aside so I have room for my um, paper items. So I hope you can still hear me, but I just haven't felt up to doing things like this, making the fabric clusters and flips and things like that. So maybe tonight, I'm doing better, so maybe tonight I will actually get to work on some of that. Now I hope my camera's up high enough um, because this is the paper part and they're in kind of big tubs. So this was a drawer unit, and but it was a single drawer. It had a casing around it and the drawer just went in, slid in and out and you could stack the drawers. But I didn't need the whole unit anymore. Um, but I've been just keeping my scraps of printed, my pattern paper in here. I went through this and I cleaned out quite a bit. And so there's a lot of space in here, but I also stack these items in there, which isn't convenient, but when you have limited space, you do what you have to do. So this is all pattern paper. I love these blues. I'm definitely going to do something with that. These are like a, a mat, like a photo mat stack of papers. And I may have gotten them in a Happy Mail. I don't remember purchasing them, but I love the blue and white. So I want to do something special with them. But some of them are big scraps like this, and some of them are smaller scraps. So I definitely want to have a session where I uh, sew pages, sew pieces together to make a larger page for when I need large pages. So I, I like to do that with these bigger pieces, even with a, a strip. But if it's longer, you know, I can. I like to piece those together to make large pages, and then maybe um, pair some of these, the smaller pieces, with some of the solid pieces I'm going to show you and make ephemera. This little basket has the littler pieces. Um, yeah, just little pieces for when I'm making a tag or something and I want a collage on it. I'll look in here first. And then this envelope is collage material. It's um, doilies and wrapping paper, just scraps of things and even scraps of patterned paper, but they're tiny. Book pages that I think would be great for collage and things like that. So when I want a collage piece, I pull this out also. Um, 
this pad I keep, I keep in here with the small papers because this is just for when I need to back something with something dark. This was on clearance for like, I don't see the price here, but I think it was either two or three dollars. So, because sometimes I just want a dark piece, I got that. So I keep it there so I know right where it is when I need it. And this goes under my my desk here, but I can't put it there now because my tripod's in the way. And then this does go in a drawer unit that I have. And this is my scraps of cardstock. I used to have them separated into colors and neutrals. And then I had another drawer for the file folder scraps. But I just don't have that kind of room since I moved. So I put everything into one bin. So I definitely need to get rid of some of this, but I decided that before I get rid of it, I'm going to make some ephemera and then I will dispose of some of it. So I'm gonna have, I'm hoping for the winter to on Saturdays do some stamping on these pieces of ephemera or making tags and cards um, and just making ephemera on on the weekends so that's what I'm hoping to do so I want to have some sessions where I take my pieces like this and my file folder pieces and um, use my stamps get my stamps out and have a fun play with my stamps and make all kinds of ephemera and then I want to take these pieces and maybe back them onto some of my patterned pieces and make cards and tags, pockets and whatever. Then I will make sure when I get busier, when the flea markets open up again, um, I will make sure I um, get rid of more of this. But I want to use some of it before I actually, you know, discard things. So that's my uh, organization for scraps. And in addition, I always have a little pile of stuff on my desk from the most recent project or projects that I did. Oh, I don't want to zoom. I'm just going to crank it down closer. I had it up higher than normal. Um, so I thought maybe I would do a little bit of that today. I don't have any specific plan except that one day I started putting some things together and I have a couple. If I can remember what I was doing, it was probably a week ago that I did it. But I think um, I, just, I just left these things on my desk from recent projects and I have my paper scraps that I just showed you right here next to me so I thought maybe I would just work on some since I'm inspired to do it and I'm feeling good today so I have more energy than I've had in a very long time so let's go for it and it's even afternoon I've been cleaning I cleaned the bathrooms. I mean, I've been keeping up with pretty much most of the cleaning while I've been sick. Not maybe as much as normal, but I cleaned my bathrooms today and organized some stuff in the house, not in here. And I'm still feeling good, so it's awesome. Just trimming off the extra length on this piece. This is a um, Stampin' Up piece, and I thought I would... I just had this little scrap, and I just think it is so pretty. I just love the colors and the watercolory look to it, and I just wanted to keep it. So I'm just going to make a little collaged card. I'm not fond of the back, so I'll probably cover that with something you can journal on. I think I had this butterfly picked out for this. So I'm just using things that I got out and didn't put away. I did spend some time 
cleaning in here today um, because I just finished a journal project so I got all that stuff put away and I didn't leave any of it out which maybe I should have since I was going to do this but that's okay do I need something else for this I don't think so I should bring my collage envelope up here This card is a little too big. Let's try it this way because it would be for a pretty wide journal if you want to put it in a pocket like that. Of course you could slide it into a uh, vertical side loading pocket. just want to keep things to a uh, an average size for what I use in my journals. I think I like it the way it looks better this way. Yeah, I think I like it like this. I do have lots more organizing and destashing to do. Um, I haven't touched my laces. Um, Celeste gave me those, um, you know, the cards to wind lace around that she made. And I just haven't felt up to tackling that project. So I'm hoping to get to that pretty soon. I have to see my laces are in a drawer unit they are organized very pretty nicely but they're just on plain old you know cards um, but I I don't know if the cards that Celeste gave me will actually stand up the way I have them standing up I don't know if they're too wide for my drawers so I have to figure out what I'm going to do how I'm going to do it But for now, we'll focus on just making some ephemera. I should have filled my glues before I started this. I think I better use some of my Scotch white glue. I, I've been neglecting it because I just use the uh, art glitter glue and the Fabri-Tac now, but I have this bottle that needs to get used. I've been neglecting my uh, ATG gun too. Um, I do use it sometimes, but I ran out of the tape. And I haven't been to my craft stores since before Christmas. I could order it from Amazon, but I just figure I'll get to the craft stores one of these days. I'm not in that much of a hurry to get the ATG tape. It's been so long since I've used this that the nozzle's clogged. There, I think I got it. Or maybe I'll just skip this because I don't want to waste time unclogging it. I'll just go back to my other glues for today.
This is a digital butterfly that I've had in my binder for a while. I don't remember where it came from. I was debating on whether to trim that up to make the border even on all sides, but I decided I like it looking a little funky. That doily, you can hardly see. It just adds a little extra texture up there. I'm going to round the corners. And I'm going to look for something to put on the back of that. this old notebook that I just got in a happy mail recently. I can use those pages. Oh, that's not the right pin. This is the pin I want. Pretty fragile. It needs to be glued down because I just tore it trying to just pick it up. So I think I'll just glue it down and cut around it. I'm having issues with glue today. I think I'd like to have a little session, maybe after every couple of journals that I make, to do something with the pieces that are left over so I don't just have them accumulating all the time. Don't hold me to that. It sounds like a good concept, right? And since I have an Etsy store, if I end up with more ephemera than I can use, which I probably would if I did that, I can always put sets of ephemera in my shop. Some of you may work full time and not have a lot of crafting time and it might be very convenient for you to have some handmade ephemera that someone made for you. Let's see if you can find a little tab to put on that. That's cute, and it has a tiny little window. It would be nice to put a word in there. I'll have to look, see if I have a little word that would fit in there before I do it, but I could ink around that and glue a word in there and put that on as a tab. Apparently I didn't glue that doily on very well at the top here.
There we go. You can still see the stripes of the paper through that, and that makes it look pretty neat. Okay, that's one. I also had this one kind of prepared, partway prepared. Um, just a piece of scrapbook paper. I love that color green. And my green stamps. And this little image. So cute! And um, I cut this cardstock to fit on the back to make it sturdier. like everything else over here. I've got just white pieces and small pieces of ledger type of things. Some postage stamps. I don't really want to add postage stamps because I have all of these stamps. When I make ephemera like this, I need to remember that I need to make journals that aren't a specific theme, so I can just put all kinds of ephemera in it. And I've kind of been doing that this year, making more unthemed journals. I still love to do a theme, but I have to do some that aren't themed, so I can use items that I think I need that, that can't go into a specific theme journal, you know. And I want to use more ephemera or vintage stuff. And I'm more prone to use that in stuff that doesn't have a theme. Like any generic vintage. I think I need to get over when I'm making a tulip theme journal. I need to be able to put ephemera in there that isn't specific to tulips, you know? It's just an old receipt or something. It's okay to do that. I get hung up on making everything specific to the theme. But this is cute because of that adorable owl image. And I don't even know where I got that owl image. It's a digital. Maybe it's Mrs. Cog's. Maybe I cut it from one of her cards. it up just so there'd be a tiny little space there so it just, just didn't feel all compact there and I just wanted there to be a tiny bit of space between the two pieces. Now should I make it a tag shape? I think so. It 
doesn't look very evenly cut. It's not so noticeable on the front. reinforcements that had the brown wood stamp on them, wood grain. That would be perfect for this. wanting to put the wrong pins in here. This is very narrow and not all the pins fit. Vintage photo pad is all dried up. This one is gathered twigs. Might as well do the fiber and get it all finished up. is hiding in there and I don't I never see it there so let's use it it's actually a variegated there we got green oh and blue that's why it hides in there because that blue was blending in with that so it has a lot of colors on there that I don't want the green and the brown are not together if they were I would cut that part off and use it I'll just use this gold. Try to double it. Sometimes it's hard to double these really fuzzy ones because they get... You'll see. I've got four strands here. I'm going to try to loop the right ones through. Okay, I got all four strands and now I've got two loops. Just open it up wide enough so the hairy stuff doesn't get in the way. I pull them through. There, that wasn't bad. Okay. got two done. I've got this piece of card stock and some stamps and got this vintage ledger. This pretty blue doesn't really seem to go with the vintage ledger but maybe we can make it work. We can juxtapose bright and faded. So what do I want to put on that? I had an envelope of Mrs. Cog's images that I wanted to use. Oh, I think I see it. I think I meant to have this little collection of stuff with me. This is supposed to help me make stuff. 
And this little box is another, probably the bottom part of that card box I showed you that has pieces that I want to make ephemera with. So that's what I needed over here. So I have Mrs. Cog's owl images in here. That's probably where I cut that. Yeah, there's another one. But maybe not. I, it's already cut out, so I don't know. And then they, these are Peter Pan cards. Um, I don't think I want them. That's all I have, Owl and Peter Pan. I like this crumpled up and cracked old edge there, so I want to keep that. I'm just playing. I don't know if any of this will work. Look at that pretty stamp. Well, what harm would it do to try? It's just a bunch of scraps I'm trying to get rid of. I love that corner though. Maybe if I move that down there. start gluing things down and see what we think. This is a very old ledger, and I've talked about it before, but after it was, after it had served its purpose as a ledger, someone used it as a scrapbook. I'm just pulling up these pieces that are loose. 
that were glued down. Fortunately, the glue released on some of the pages, so I was able to, to save and use these beautifully scripted uh, ledger pages. I love them. It, the journal or the scrapbook was in terrible condition, the ledger, terrible condition, and I got it cheap at free market. Now I don't like this very square corner, so that's going to have to be covered. Is that where the stamp will go? Possibly. And I've just got this little strip of embroidered netting. Maybe I just need a different color stamp. I really wanted that blue one, but I think that one looks better. I'll use the blue one in a different piece. It was just too close to this blue piece. We'll round the corners of this one. This could be, I could leave it just like that and make it a tuck spot. I think that's what I'll do. And then if I decide to make it a journal card, I can round the other corners. I think I need to go. My time is up. I could play doing this for a long time, but I have other things to do. And it's just time to go. But I had time to make three. Maybe I'll finish this up before I leave this room, just to make sure it's completely done before I go. I'll ink around it and then add this tab if I find something to put in there. And this, so cute. I love that little owl. And that is a very pretty tuck spot. Thanks for watching. Um, tell me what you think of the storage. I know it's not ideal, but because of the way my room is set up, that's the only thing that works for me. If you have better ideas, feel free to share. And I will see you soon in another video. I hope you have a creative day today. Bye-bye.